In the workshop, a modified Southworth Engines 12-inch boiler feed pump built by Don English. This is part two, and I explain who my friend Don English was in part one. In part one, I showed how I made a water inlet adapter, and in this episode, I'm showing how I make an adapter for the tap on top of the valve chest. The water inlet adapter that I made in the last episode just allows a piece of silicone rubber pipe to be pressed onto it, but this one is a little bit different, because the pressure of water coming out of this tap is higher than the pressure in the boiler itself. I need to make the adapter 3 eighths of an inch in diameter and cut a 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch thread on one end of it. With the micrometer set to 3 eighths of an inch, it's time to cut the part to that size. Once again, this is a very simple plain turning job and I'm using a piece of brass for it. And it's now a very good fit in the pipe union. It's time now to thread part of this. With a die in a die holder on the end of my tailstock die holder adapter, it's a very simple job to cut a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch thread on the end of the piece of brass. It's quite a clean thread as you can see once I brush the swarf out of the way. What I'm doing at the moment is taking the finest of fine cuts across the face of the work, followed as always by drilling a hole with the centre drill. This time though the centre drill has to go quite a long way into the work to create an inverted cone which will accept the coned union on the end of the pipe. If you're doing that and the lathe starts to chatter then just slow the lathe down. In this case it didn't so everything's okay. I try the nut and the union in place and everything's fine. In this clip, using a suitable twist drill, I'm drilling out the centre. It's important though that the twist drill isn't too big, because if I do drill the hole too big, apart from the fitting will be weak, there will not be the shape part that matches up with the union cone. I could have made this part exactly the same way as I made the water union at the bottom, and just threaded a complete fitting. But as this video is designed to be a tutorial, I thought I would show an alternative method. In the outer part of the workshop, I've coated the brass part in some flux. This is Easy Flow number 2 flux. I removed the surplus and now I'm heating up the part using my blowtorch. You will notice that I only apply a very small amount of silver solder to the joint once the flux takes on a watery appearance. I'll leave the part to cool so it's not glowing red and then I just drop it in a pot of water. The thermal shock of the water removes some of the scale but the rest has to be done manually. The best thing to do with it is leave it in the acid bath for a few hours, but I didn't in this case. My acid bath's getting a bit full at the moment. In this clip, I'm fitting a short piece of pipe so I can test the pump. For this first test, I'm not going to use it to feed a boiler. I'll be doing that later in another video. I have two pieces of silicone rubber tubing connected, one to the inlet, and then the outlet goes back to the water bottle. And all I have to do now is just turn on the compressed air. You can hear the point where the pump starts to pump water, and it's now running very sweetly. I fitted a piece of 3 16 diameter copper pipe into the end of the silicone rubber tubing for the return, just to restrict it a little bit, and as you can see, it's pumping at a very good pressure, and it's hardly moving. Initially, there was a very slight water leak around the two bolts on top of the water chest, but a bit of Loctite 542 stopped this. And also, I noticed that these nuts weren't very tight, so I'm just nipping them up with a spanner whilst it's still pumping. And as you can see, no leaks to worry about. The purpose of this valve is simple, it's to restrict the flow of the output to simulate pressure. By closing this valve, the pump has to work a lot harder. And here is the acid test. If the pump was badly made, there would be water squirting in all directions at this point. But it's not, this pump is beautifully made. Another of Don's modifications, and I don't really know how he's done this, and I'm not going to take it apart to look, he's made it so that the actual valve that's been pushed back and forth by the piston rod is in the centre of the steam chest. It isn't normally on these pumps, it's over one side. Here's a clip of a Southworth 12-inch vertical pump that I bought a while back, and this was a factory-built model. It had a cast-iron steam cylinder and a gunmetal water cylinder, and as you can see, Apart from it looks a good bit more frail than the one that Don's built, the valve is offset to one side. I had to do quite a bit of work on this pump, but eventually I got it to run very well. Whereas with the pump Don built, it just runs very well straight out of the box, so to speak. 
And here's Don's pump again, just as a comparison. You can really feel the water pulsing through the piping. There isn't an air reservoir on this engine. On the Southworth duplex pumps, they normally have an air reservoir and this cushions the water noises. With a solid hydraulic column through piping, it can be noisy, like the old plumbing in houses. The air reservoir in the circuit just acts as a damper and stops the knocking. I remove the short piece of copper piping from the end of the water outlet, and here I'm opening the valve to let the pump pump at full volume. This engine is only running at £30 per square inch of compressed air, and as you can see it runs very well indeed. Because the circuit is wide open now you can hear the engine start to knock. It's only slight, but that's because there's no back pressure. For the rest of this video I'm just going to let the engine run, so you can listen to the sights and sounds of a steam engine running on compressed air. You'll see this engine many times in the future because it's not one I'm going to sell, it's one I'm going to keep. And its primary use is going to be for pumping water into the Castle Steam V6 boiler. And I'm really looking forward to the steam test, but I have to get one or two other projects out of the way first. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this very short series useful. There's going to be another video, but it will just be a painting video.